this is the Crime Light X5. This is a multi-spectral um, light source that has been made with five wavelengths of light integrated into one unit. So within the Crime Light X5, we actually have two LEDs per wavelength of the wavelengths that we often associate with serology investigations. Hence, our pet name for it, which is Crime Light X Serology Unit. These wavelengths, so from UV through to blue-green, as well as cool white light, are often associated with the search for body fluids. However, they do have a range of other uses, including searching um, for contamination, as well as bruising and injuries. These wavelengths can be really, really effective in searching for injuries and potentially giving visualisation to injuries that aren't visible with the naked eye. Often what might happen with an injury is that as it fades, particularly bruising, it's no longer visible or only faintly visible on the top layers of skin. So to what we see visibly, we may not see much. However, the bruising will persist in the deeper levels of the dermis. And using a light source, particularly violet light or maybe UV light, which are both within the Crime Light X5, can be really, really helpful to giving um, some visibility to a bruise that is no longer visible to us with the naked eye. And that can help to um, corroborate a victim's account of what has happened. We'll start with is a simple white light search. So sometimes white light can be a very de effective detection strategy. It's important to see what we can see visibly. Sometimes white light is all we will need to be able to search for evidence. So in cases like this, we can see this area of staining already just visibly using white light. If we then move on to this final example, we'll look and see if anything is already visible using white light as our first port of call. Having those five light sources within one handheld unit means that the examiner can quickly switch between these light sources. When switching between light sources, the crime light will um, alert the user to which goggles should be used alongside that light source. And speaking of goggles, the Crime Light is recommended to be used with our newer ProVision goggles. So rather than needing a separate pair of goggles for each light source, we suggest having our base um, UV blocking goggles with interchangeable magnetic filters, which just simply fix onto the front of the goggles. This allows for a slightly more seamless integration of the goggles with the light sources and means that rather than a slightly more time consuming um, process of having to switch goggles, we can simply switch the filter that is overlaying over the top of the goggles. We're gonna start by searching this item with violet light. Now, as I move over the surface using the violet light, and the 455 nanometer long pass filter that the crime light is now telling me to fix to the front of my goggles, I can see that there are several areas of staining evident on this surface. This filter is used to actually block out all of that violet illumination and allow us to simply see the fluorescence on this surface. This is slightly different to how an examiner might traditionally have conducted an investigation. So the equivalent of a Crime Light X is actually five separate light sources. So that condenses the amount of equipment that needs to be carried. And the equivalent of the ProVision goggles would be several sets of separate goggles. So again, it condenses the amount of equipment that needs to be carried. And Similar to what would be discussed with the crime light auto of it being slightly less invasive and slightly less intimidating when there is less equipment, that same principle can be applied to the crime light X. There is less equipment, so it could potentially be less invasive and less traumatic 
for a, vic a victim to be uh, examined using a crime light X rather than the traditional light sources that would be needed to visualise injuries and bruising. So now we're going to use blue light to search this particular item of evidence. So again, I have switched over my filter goggles. I have now applied the 495 nanometer long pass filter so that that's going to block out all of the blue light. And so we can now see this area of staining here on the surface and these types were actually used as a gag. So this is actually an area of saliva staining. Now, sometimes these stains can be missed. And so it's really important that we do use high intensity illumination to get back a little bit of fluorescence from what can be quite a weakly fluorescent stain. The wavelengths included within the Crime Light X5 are a cool white light, UV light, violet light, blue light and blue green light. So that's five wavelengths and we have two LEDs per wavelength. Now these are the same wavelengths that we actually traditionally use across our crime light range. So they're familiar wavelengths to our customers and these can be used, yes, for the examination of a victim, but these wavelengths also lend themselves particularly well to the examination of garments when searching for things like body fluids, things like biological residues. Many of these fluoresce um, from UV through to blue-green and that's why these wavelengths are, have been included in this particular product is to mean that it's a little bit more appropriate for a much more specific type of investigation. I've now switched to a third different light source. In this case, I am using a blue-green light source. So again, as instructed by my crime light, I have changed over to a different filter, this time a 550 long pass filter. And so this initial area that was rather visible already in the white light, we can see fluorescing very, very brightly. This is a very obvious area of staining on this surface. But as I move over, we can also see this secondary area of staining as well that is really, really enhanced by actually viewing in the fluorescence. Okay? Yeah, well, um, can you explain what staining it is? Okay, yeah, yeah. So on this surface, we do have semen. So semen can be a very, very fluorescent body fluid. It's one of um, the body fluids that does tend to have quite strong fluorescence all the way from the UV through to the blue and the blue-green as we are using now. It tends to be actually more of an impact of the substrate, so the surface the stain is deposited on, um, as to which light source is actually best to visualise um, each particular area of staining.